Uh, yeah, so it's actually, uh, thanks for joining. It's actually, I think, the third or fourth talk about UX uh, since yesterday. So I'm not going to give any definitions. I'm not going to actually give talk much about models, abstract models, and so on. So this actually, this is a trap because I'm not really going to go into models, but what, when I, what I want to show you is uh, actually some tools, some methods and, and tools that really can help you get users involved in your processes, make it easier and lighter and more effective for your processes. So I'm Wojtek. Uh, this is my professional timeline. So I went a long way through UX research, UX, UX design, then uh, to uh, leading a UX ag agency, uh, helping the, um, the, the teams and, and building new services. I'm also a trainer. And uh, from 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 uh, last year, I'm I'm also a product manager. So uh, these are the perspectives that I can uh, show you. Mm. And uh, I come from a uh, from a UX agency called Symmetria, and it's. Uh, over the years, we had a chance to work with many brands, but also with many industries and many different products, from industrial products to, to consumer products, mostly digital uh, apps, websites, uh, and, and uh, many different kinds of products and services to research with users and to design for users. So end users will be the key, uh, key word today. So, I want to start with a short, uh, let's say, question to you. So can you guess what is missing in this quote? So whenever there is a time crunch in the Agile setting, something is all, often the first thing to get sacrificed, whether it, you know, just short, uh, we just water it down, or we cut it off altogether. So Paul already spoiled the, the answer. So what's the answer? Is it the answer for you as well? Yeah, so definitely UX research is often missing uh, from, from our processes. It is like users are the most vulnerable perspective in our companies. That is, we, it's so easy to forget about them. And there are different, uh, different uh, reasons for this. Because sometimes it's just uh, maybe this guy or, or, or a group of people who say, Oh, come on, we already know this much. We, are, we know everything up front. So they, they, they are certain that we, we have every information already there. And we don't have to ask anyone. You know, the case is closed. We have user stories. We have user acceptance, testing. So enough of this user stuff. Come on, it's, it's, it's enough. And it's an illusion of user-centered approach because actually we don't know that much usually and uh, we cannot go this way. Uh, but on the other hand, there's often a problem with, uh, with the user research itself. Uh, and I want to address this as well because many methods are just too... Uh, too, too big to use in agile uh, processes. And uh, it's our fault uh, as UX community, I must say, and we need to transform as well, and I will address this as well. But uh, sometimes there's no way that you know, UX professionals tell you, okay, so we'll send you the report soon, and it's just not good enough, not just, just not fast enough for you. So uh, this is also something, this is also a reason to, uh, to, to and a thing to, 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 to consider. But the fact is a fact, and it was mentioned also yesterday. Uh, Amanda told us, uh, reminded us of the rule of getting out of the building. This is necessary. This is completely necessary to build efficient, to build, build good products. And whether you go outside, uh, like personally, like, like all of the methods that were mentioned yesterday, like uh, you know, just meeting the users in a cafe or just talking to them, uh, face to face, which are great uh, methods, or you can sometimes do it remotely, and these are the methods that I and tools that I will show you mostly today. You just need to do this because otherwise, it's just an illusion of you know knowing your user, uh, you know, just having the personas there, just having thinking with user stories is not enough. 
And I don't think there's any, uh, there's uh, ever going to be a way to change this because uh, even with the most, you know, uh, with with the most advanced technology, uh, the way only seeing how people react to your products, how they really interact with them, there's no alternative to that. And I hope, and I, and I doubt it will ever change. So I'm going to show you three, let's say, cases, three perspectives, and the ways to solve this. So we're going to think about, okay, what if we have an existing product and we want to test it with users really quickly? What if we have a, we want to build a concept of a new product, or maybe uh, understand if there's a need for a new product or a new feature? Uh, and then, if we start, if we know there's a need, and we started to design to prototype, how can we build a feedback loop for us? With, uh, with the users. So we'll start with existing products and <clears throat> the questions we might have here is, well, the most fundamental, do users even know how to use our product? Are we certain of this? Do users operate it efficiently? This is important with, with uh, business apps, for example. So do they learn over time? Are they, are they efficient with it uh, when they are returning users, returning customers? Uh, is our content easy to find and what kinds of feelings, what kinds of, you know, uh, approach uh, and perception there is of the whole product? And ways to do this, there are many ways to do this, so we, you probably know lab or field usability studies. You, we can do all kind of also expert research, but we want to address, what we want to address here is uh, mm, remote testing. And I want to show you how to how it can look like. Uh, so, what it looks like is like this. So, remote test. Oh no, no, sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong picture. It's not remote testing. It's a, another kind of remote testing. What we mean here is uh, we do remote testing, which happens online. So we try to intercept users online on your website uh, and we try to ask them to do a couple of tasks for us. And uh, so this looks like a, like a normal usability testing that happens in lab, except that it happens online. So the user has a task. Uh, she, can, she can check out the tasks uh, anytime she needs it and then decide, okay, great. I've managed to do the task. Uh, there was a success. Uh, great, thanks, uh, I, I, I did it. So users do this voluntarily, so there's, a, uh, there's only a percentage of users who will, who will take part in this, uh, in this study, but still it's a quantitative study, so you can have many, many users do this sim simultaneously, do this simple tasks, and then you can analyze the results. So the result of this is that you have a let's say hundreds or even thousands of sessions recorded of those users. And the difference between this and your normal analytics is that you know what kind of tasks were the users doing. So this way you know, uh, you, you can analyze really how they manage, how they try to do different tasks. For example, you can go through click streams and check uh, not only the task completion rate, so to so check you know, how easy it is to, 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 to do the task, but also to check, for example, if most people uh, succeeded, which way they, did they take through your website, or if they didn't succeed, which way did they go? and maybe there's a problem along that. So this is a quantitative uh, approach to that. What you can add to this study is also, uh, is also more questions, uh, open, closed questions. And an example I want to show you, which was really revealing, was that once we, we uh, we tested a travel website. It was an international big travel operator. And we, at the end, we asked them, okay, so after you did all these tasks, what do you think the website allows you to do? And we, we, we said, okay, so does it allow to browse holiday packages? And 99% of the users said, okay, yeah, yeah, it does. Does it allow you to make a reservation? 81% said yes. But when we asked how many, uh, do, do, can you buy the trip online there, only 54% of the users who already took the whole path knew that they can buy the trip online. 
And this was, you know, a, a red alert con uh, constantly because it was an e-commerce site, so we wanted to check instantly what's going on. And one of the reasons we found is that there was a different label on the um, on the on the buttons uh, on on the product website, so it said book now. And then it changed to buy now, and, and we, we started to communicate the, um, the prices and the ability to buy online more efficiently. And this was thanks to this study. Okay, so with remote studies, uh, you can um, really quickly evaluate the, 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 get a quantitative view of your website's usability. So you have simply one, like one or two days of preparation. You have to consider the, the, the collecting of responses. Uh, we see that there's around 1% conversion of to, you know, to join the study and finish the study. So you have to calculate that and then analyze the results. But uh, you can also you know, look into the results as they, as they are collected, as, uh, as, they, as, as they happen. So in, in, in good cases, you can even do this in one week and have it ready and have a quantitative overview of your, uh, of your, of your website, of your app, uh, because you can also uh, do this for mobile apps. Mm. And you have success rate, you have, uh, you have test task completion times, different kinds of metrics that you can then communicate and, and to use as benchmarks or, um, or, or use to, to, to launch new product, uh, projects. Okay, so let's move to the second uh, approach. So it's uh, creating product concept. So in this case, uh, we have an existing product, or maybe there's no existing product, uh, but we wanna we wanna find out is there a need for the new product that we wanna launch, or maybe for the new feature that we wanna launch, and here testing is usually not enough, and you have to find out okay, so what does the user work like with with uh, with the current solutions? How do they solve current problems, and do people want new product at all? At all? So this is a way to. Mm, to, 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 to try to solve this. Mm, and ways to do this, you can do interviews. So this was mentioned yesterday, remember? So, so if you want to launch a new product, you can meet people at a cafe or, or invite them or go to their homes. And, and then it turns into ethnography, so you can observe them. And observation is the most powerful tool here, definitely more powerful usually than, than just interviews. But what I want to show you and makes ethnography easier is mobile ethnography, so-called mobile ethnography, which looks like this. Oh no, again, wrong picture. So it looks like this. So uh, actually it's, uh, it's one of the tools for mobile ethnography which helps you to gather experiences and collect experiences from users as they work with your product or maybe competitors' product, existing products, or maybe just the product concept that you gave to them. But often it's impossible to test it on the spot. And this is where we have ethnography, mobile ethnography, where you actually give this kind of app to users. Uh, there, there's a mobile app that they can install and they go live their lives and just report to you as they use something like this as they uh, have a need for, for something like this. And what they give you is usually comments, some attachments, maybe photos of what happens. And they can also uh, rate the experience they have uh, to um, at, at a given moment. And the result of this is something very, very powerful. So this is an example of a of a study that we're actually running right now. It's about mobile payments. And we've simply, this is a very big study, so probably not very agile because it, it's, uh, we have 55 participants going around the city, just doing mobile payments over a couple of weeks and reporting to us real time. So uh, all the, every time they do something connected to mobile payments, they send us a rating, they send us a, a quick note about what happened, maybe some photos, and we have the exact location where it happened, so we can even track it, it uh, you know, on, uh, on the map. And thanks to that, then you have to analyze, of, of course, all those insights, 
but you can build also customer journey maps, experience maps, which were mentioned yesterday, and check uh, and, 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 and have a great overview of this, uh, um, of this experience over time, which is otherwise very hard to collect. So with mobile ethnography, it's not that fast. Um, but it's much faster, I, I assure you, it's much faster and much more efficient than, than uh, standard ethnography where the researcher observes the users all the time. So th this is much more effective, but you still need to recruit the users. Uh, you need to, usually you do some interviews at the beginning to brief them, to, to tell them how the study looks like collect insights and then analyze the, the, the results. So in total, it's, it's probably a uh, couple of weeks, but, uh, but still for the amount of, of information that you can gather, it's very, very powerful. You get many insights, you get the experience ratings, um, and you can map the customer journeys. And uh, I've shown you the, the, the tool that's called Experience Fellow. Uh, this, this, was, uh, this was the tool. But you can probably do a sh simple version of using just instant messaging or some Google Forms. We did it as well. But it's not that powerful then. OK. The third case that I want to talk about, so, so we validated the, the concept of the, of the product. Now we're designing it, building it. So this is probably the case, the, the most usual case that, uh, that could happen. Uh, yeah, and there are different, many different questions that happen here. So for example, you know, which feature or which user story is more important to, to users, how to, how to prioritize them. Uh, does the design that we have work for users? Does the, the prototype that we've designed work for users? Which version of the solution is, is better for users? Because sometimes we have different ideas within, within the team. And are we building the right thing uh, at all? Does it, does it really stick to the product? And does it build value? Uh, so again, we can do normal lab testing, uh, just inviting users uh, in, 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 in quick iterations. Uh, but there are also some remote testing uh, powerful tools that I want to show you. So uh, one of the tools is simply called user testing. Anyone knows this? User testing com? Yeah. So basically, uh, the, 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 the thing, the, the simpleness of this is that you send a link to your prototype or to your website, whatever you want. You send a link and ask a question or, 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 or send a task. And the next day, uh, hopefully the next day, you get videos of people using the website and talking about it. So you have a video of, of, of a person doing the task, and you hear the voice. It's, it's muted now, of course, but you, you hear the voice, and you, have, you can take notes about what happens. And uh, this happens really fast, and it's really uh, easy to use. So uh, this might be a powerful tool. Mm. However, it has some drawbacks. So it's mostly user testing has uh, their own panel of users, which is very powerful. There are many users, and you can define what kind of user do you need. But probably they won't be able to find you know, very specific, uh, specific users. Uh, but you have to remember that uh, even if they if they have the category of users that you that you need, they are still uh, there's still the question of panel quality. So any panel tests mean that the company has a has a group of people who maybe not make a living but have get get some money from just you know answering of the all this uh, service and questions. So if you type user testing in, uh, in YouTube, this is what comes up. So how do I make cash with user testing and so on? So you have to remember that these are people who are paid to review different sites and just talk about them. So they can give you great insights. But you know, sometimes you, you, you just wonder if this is you know, the, the, the real honest feedback that you can get. So be aware of that. Uh, so, uh, except there's a, another tool that I want to. So, so this is really a really fast approach. You define user tasks, you, you define the profile, wait for results, hopefully for one day, and then 
of course, and this is something else, you have to watch the videos and analyze them. So, so this is something to, to, to remember. Uh, except for user testing, there's also a nice tool called Validately, and it allows you also, it, in, it invites you to, to bring your own users if you want. So this might be a solution for remote testing if you have access to your users and you can recruit them yourselves. Uh, Except for, for uh, apart from user recordings, you can also get uh, metrics and ask some additional questions here uh, as well. But as you can see and probably feel, this does not uh, finish you know, all the possibilities. And uh, actually, this is something that we started to feel as, as, uh, as an agency, as a new as a UX agency as well. Uh, and we started to think about, you know, there's something missing, and, and the, all those methods do not match all the problems that, uh, that are here. And probably user research, UX research should transform, and, and, and uh, in some cases should, uh, give, should, should operate on different principles. So the first principle we thought is, you know, sometimes those quick readings, like you know, even uh, simple questions, uh, individual questions, are more important than big, complex studies that takes week to week to uh, to finish. Then, you know, sometimes just talking to a user is much better than a big study with academic validity, statistical validity, and so on, so on. And sometimes it's it's just like you know, either you talk to a user and and you have a quick uh, quick uh, test or you don't have anything at all because you don't have time to do do much more the third principle that we thought is that we have to work so that user research becomes a practice and not a milestone. Currently, it's often like a milestone. So you have a user research coming, user testing coming in some weeks, and you have to prepare for that, and it's like a big deal, separate project, and so on. We want, as UX community, we should think about ways to bring uh, methods for user research to become a practice in, a, in agile processes. and. Uh, what's also very important is that exposure to users is often very important for the team and team assumptions are not uh, are not powerful enough and sometimes even even you know seeing the users uh, and, and having the ability to ask from the team to users is very powerful and can help pro the projects and can help teams be motivated. So this is what we called an agile user research manifesto, big words, but uh, you know it's just an idea that we want to operate uh, around. And around this, uh, around these principles, we built our own tool that I want to just quickly tell you about, and we called it Agile User Research Room, Respo Team Agile User Research Room, and it looks like this. Oh no, sorry, again, different, wrong picture. Uh, so it it it, it actually uh, looks a little bit different, and it uh, the the reason for that for for building this is that. We want to address all those quick, sometimes simple individual questions that you have during a project at different stages. So sometimes you want to learn more about users. So ask them, okay, what does your day look like? We want to understand. Or you want to ask them, okay, take a photo of, of your desk or something uh, personal and, and just see it to understand. Sometimes you want to understand, you, you want to uh, check if, if a system message uh, that we have is understandable, which version of the design works for them. Dif all those different kind of questions that are really quick and you have just like five minutes to ask them and then you need the answers really, really fast. So the idea that we have is that what if we took a group of users and invited them to into our team, kind of. So invited them to stay with our team during the project and be like a standby mode. And you can, we can ask them anytime, and they get instant, uh, instant notification uh, through Facebook Messenger, and they answer really quickly. So we have answers for the next day, and they really help us to uh, make better product decisions like every day, not like every month, every 
half a year, but every day. And they are just simple, simple stuff. This is this is this this won't answer. Uh, we we won't have 100% certainty with a small group like that, but still. It will uh, it will be used and will be, it will be helpful. So this is what we what we built. So we, we you can you can uh, ask a question and then you get all the kinds of responses from users. And from from the current uh, perspective, we see that it really works really fast. And what's different from the from the other uh, methods is that you, you can ask also follow up questions. So you can build a discussion between users and also build uh, greater value and make better decisions based on that. And there's a gamification system and rewards incentive system built into that. But the difference is these users just work for you. These are just your, uh, your users, so they are not professional respondents. They are probably users of your platform or users of your products that want to be honest because they know they will use your product so whatever they tell you might probably come back to them so it's a platform for for quick uh, reviews with your end users which uh, which which makes it easier okay so uh, uh, there's a just a quick comparison of the different tools that we talked about so you can see that they are different uh, in case I, I think this will be available online but what you can take photos uh, you can you can uh, you can see that there are differences in approaches whether uh, depending on at what stage your product uh, your project is differences in what kind of product you have so for example some of these tools I, I showed you focus mostly on websites and on on, on, on uh, web prototypes mm, and for example mobile ethnography or, or Respo team can work for many different kinds of products and services uh, and uh, there's a difference in approach to uh, is it a quantitative tool that gives you large sample uh, and and let's say uh, um, metrics really really verified metrics or you get more insights you get more like uh, qualitative uh, value um, and and easier way to understand your users and the way they think so uh, I hope this was uh, this was a uh, refreshing uh, the refreshing uh, um, let's say overview for you. Uh, I invite you to use this, uh, to try to use these tools, uh, and remember that if your team is really agile and lean, you must include user research. But on the other hand, expect the the kind of quality and the qui kind of dynamic approach from uh, user research perspective. So, as as UX practitioners, we also try to become agile and lean in order to to work better for the agile and and lean uh, communities and 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 projects. Okay, thank you very much.